Right now at 5.30, a spotlight on the dangers of social media. The U.S. Surgeon General has gone as far as issuing a health advisory of the potential negative impacts on young people. And social media is supposed to make us feel connected. But for some, especially children and teens, it can have, well, the opposite effect. Yeah, in fact, one Stanford student says it almost killed her. Mm. Kelsey Thorard has more on how her experience with the dark side of social media led her to fight for change. Sophie Shev was just 10 years old when she first downloaded Instagram. I was someone that grew up pretty heavily bullied by my peers, and I was told that if I downloaded Instagram, that could help me fit in and stay connected. But instead of helping her, Sophie says the social media platform led her down a path to self-harm. Started off just as images of very thin models, uh, but slowly it transitioned into content that I would describe straight up as quote unquote pro Anna um, or just real eating disorder behavior encouragement content. Sophie says she quickly developed an eating disorder and by the time she was 15, doctors weren't sure if she'd survive. I was hospitalized about 13 times and during one of those hospitalizations, I was given two weeks to live. Thankfully, through poetry and finding community in mental health advocacy, Sophie was able to recover. But State Senator Nancy Skinner says many other kids are not as lucky. That's why she's sponsoring a bill to hold social media companies accountable for the harm she says their platforms can inflict on underaged users. You design these platforms, you have the ability to help lessen this harm. That's what we want you to do, and that's what SB 680 is doing. SB 680 would ban social media platforms from using designs, algorithms, or features they know cause harm to users under the age of 16, including self-harm, eating disorders, and social media addiction. The bill would require companies audit their platforms quarterly and correct any issues within 60 days or face up to a $250,000 fine. They have the ability to fix it, and that's what we want them to do. We want to stop harming our kids. Here's an easy way, and if you do, we'll hold you harmless, and if you don't, we will hold you social media responsible. Sophie is now a sophomore at Stanford and a huge supporter of SB 680. So much so, she personally testified on behalf of the bill in front of lawmakers in Sacramento. It felt like a very full circle moment. <laughs> um, my 10 year old self would have never thought that that's where I would land. Um, she had no idea the journey that she was gonna go through when she downloaded that app. But now Sophie has a pretty good idea of where she's going. She's studying mental health in America and works with the National Alliance on Mental Illness to advocate for social media regulations across the country. Sophie told me she expects it will take time to get all the regulations she wants passed, but she's confident her generation will be the one to get it done. And TikTok did not comment directly on the legislation, but did send us this statement saying, we work hard to support the safety and well-being of teens with parental controls, age-appropriate account settings, and a dedicated team of more than 40,000 safety professionals.